Dr. Yang Dao is a monk from the former kingdom of Laos. Along with hundreds of thousands of Laotians from all ethnic groups, he became an exile after communists took over the country in 1975. Today, he is a citizen of the United States of America, and richly, he deserves a peaceful retirement after making many sacrifices and facing numerous challenges with courage and determination. Dr. Yang Dao was born during World War II to a distinguished father named Yang Songying, generally known as Yan Minu, and to a devoted mother, Herker. He was also fortunate to have two stepmothers. In this 1953 picture, they are standing behind his grandmother who is wearing traditional Hmong clothing. She was from the Xiong clan. Dr. Yang Dao is the second son of the family. Dr. Yang Dao is the second person from the right in this 1992 photo. His elderly father stands in the middle. Also pictured are Dr. Yang Dao's two brothers and three half-brothers who now reside near him in Minnesota. This picture shows Dr. Yang Dao's three sisters and three half-sisters in Hmong dress along with their father, Yaminu. This photo was taken in 1950 during the French administration of colonial Indochina, an area that encompassed what are now the independent countries of Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Yaminu stands proudly with two of his sons, Yang Dao, right, and the older Yang Tua, left, along with the son of a friend standing behind Yang Dao. Thanks to the efforts of Yang Minu, the three boys received scholarships from the French government to the Petit Lycée Yasin, a French elementary school in Dallas, South Vietnam. Here is a photo taken in 1952, showing Yang Dao in the center and his new friend at the Petit Lycée Yasin. In 1954, Yang Dao resumed his education at the Institute of Amazonor, a French Catholic missionary school located in Baksan, central part of Laos. <laughs> In 1959, Yang Dao pursued his high school education at the Lao French High School of Lycée de Yangjian, capital of Laos. Here's a photo of the Lycée de Yangjian with a group of students. In 1995, Mr. Kamtum Sanuban, Yang Dao's classmate of the Lycée de Yangjian, and a famous national singer of Laos, came to visit him in Minnesota, USA. In August 1960, Yang Dao's education was interrupted for two years by a civil war. That was devastating northern Laos and seemed likely to spread with the increasing involvement of other countries, including North Vietnam, China, Russia, and the United States. With the help of Father Yves Abertrace, a French Catholic missionary shown in this photo. In September 1962, Yang Dao was able to resume his education in France, where a high school was offering him a free scholarship. Before leaving Laos for France, Yang Dao married his fiancée, Li Mo, on August 8, 1962 with the benediction of Father Batre in Catholic Church in Vientian, Laos. The newly married couple was welcomed by their two families, Yang and Li, at the residence of his wife's uncle, Mr. Tubi Li Fong, Minister of Social Welfare of the Royal Government of Laos. On August 15, 1962, 
One week after their marriage celebration, Yang Dao reluctantly but resolutely left his new wife for Paris. In June 1964, he successfully passed his national examinations for the Baccalaureate Francais, the French high school diploma at Lycée Henry IV in Paris, France. He was then given a college undergraduate scholarship by the French government to undertake his study on social and economic development at the University of Paris. After successfully passing the examination for his bachelor degree in June 1968, he received a generous scholarship from UNESCO for master's and doctoral studies at the University of Paris. In August 1964, two years after the marriage celebration, Yang Dao was joined by his wife, Li Mo, in Paris, where she took French classes at Alliance Francaise. While studying for their educational degrees, Yang Dao and Li Mo had three daughters, Mai Pa, Mai Nia, and Mai Zhuo. The family enjoyed their busy life in Paris by balancing their family responsibilities, school duties, and social activities. On May 17, 1972, Yang Dao defended his dissertation and successfully completed all requirements for the doctorate in social and economic development at the Sorbonne University of Paris, France. In June 1972, while preparing himself and his family for their return to Laos, Dr. Yang Dao, first from left in this picture, received the visit of a special guest, General Wang Bao, second from left. The famous Hmong general in the Royal Lao Army, who commanded the second military region of Laos during what has come to be called the Secret War, a conflict that in many ways was an extension of the Vietnam War. In Paris, Dr. Yang Dao informed General Wang Pao that the visit of U.S. President Nixon to President Mao Zedong in Beijing in February 1972 signified the end to both the Vietnam War and the conflict in Laos. At the end of June 1972, at the height of the Secret War of Laos, Dr. Yang Dao declined the offer of a teaching position on social and economic development at the University of Paris and decided to bring his wife and his three small children back to Laos to share the destiny of his country with his extended family and his people. For the first time after 10 years of separation, Dr. Yang Dao writes in this photo 
and his nuclear family were united with his parents, uncle and aunt, brothers, sisters, cousins, nephews, nieces in Yuanjiang, the capital of Laos. In July 1972, Dr. Yang Dao was offered the position of director of the Department of Human Resources in the Ministry of Planning of the Royal Lao Government. He visited all sectors of the Laotian population and encouraged Hmong students to pursue their education. He also organized workshops for government employees and public administrators for the purpose of planning a better future for Laos. In 1973, communist and non-communist Vietnamese continued to fight each other and to die by thousands in South Vietnam. In Laos, on February 21, 1973, the representatives of the Royal Lao government and the Communist Party Lao signed a political agreement called the Yangtian Accord for Peace and National Reconciliation. All Laotian ethnic groups from north to south were in Erfuri, as you can see here. On April 4, 1974, at the Royal Palace of Lopaba, northern Laos, His Majesty the King Sisavan Batana appointed both the communist and non-communist members of the new Royal Lao Provisional Government of a core legion. Along with 41 other high dignitaries, communist and non-communist, Dr. Yang Dao was appointed by His Majesty, the King of Laos, to the newly formed National Political Consultative Council, which functioned as a Laotian Congress. This photo, which was taken on May 16, 1974, shows Dr. Yang Dao, member of the National Political Consultative Council, Mr. Dubi Li Fun, member of the Royal Lao Provisional Coalition Government, and Mr. Dun Zhe Li Fun, Director General of the Ministry of Justice of the Royal Lao Coalition Government, leaving the official celebration of Lao National Day. On March 23, 1975, a goodwill delegation consisting of Dr. Yang Dao and seven other members of the Laotian National Political Consultative Council were invited to visit five communist countries. When they arrived in Hanoi, the capital of North Vietnam, They were hosted by Prime Minister Pham Ben Dong at his residence. The communist leader of North Vietnam expressed the desire that his country and Laos live in a peaceful coexistence based on mutual respect and bilateral cooperation. In early April 1975, Dr. Yang Dao and the other members of the Goodwill delegation traveled to Pyongyang, capital of North Korea. They were welcomed by the president of North Korea, Mr. Kim in song who said that his country wished to establish good relations with Laos in the future. After North Korea, the Goodwill delegation went to Beijing, the capital of the People's Republic of China. They were welcomed with fabulous reception at the Great Hall by Marshal Zhu De. Then the President of the National Assembly of the People's Republic of China. The Chinese leader expressed 
his deep desire for greater cooperation between China and Laos. At the end of April 1975, the Goodwill delegation of Laos National Consultative Council arrived in East Berlin, capital of East Germany. There, they received a chilly reception from the German communist leaders, who expressed suspicion toward the non-communist members of the Laotian provisional government and the Laotian National Political Consultative Council. On May 1, 1975, the Goodwill delegation attended the traditional military parade in Moscow. The capital of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. After the ceremony, they were greeted at the Kremlin by one of the top leaders of the Soviet Communist Party, who told them through an interpreter that his government would take any measure necessary to smash all resistance from what he called non-communist extremists in Laos. On May 8, 1975, Dr. Yang Dao and the Goodwill delegation returned to Yangjiang, capital of Laos. The country had fallen into great disarray following the takeover of South Vietnam by the North Vietnamese on April 30, 1975. Most Laotian cities, including Yangjiang and Lopabang, were already under communist control. On May 10, 1975, at 8.30 p.m., Dr. Yang Dao met with his best friend, Mr. Jan Samon Warabong, a Lao high-ranking government official and a great political leader who confidentially informed him of the imminent attacks of the Communist Party Lao and North Vietnamese divisions against the headquarters of General Vang Pao in Longchang. The base had already been abandoned by the CIA and was completely isolated from the rest of the world. On May 11, 1975, at 11 a.m., accompanied by his friend Jan Samon, Warawong, Dr. Yang Dao took the initiative to meet with Prime Minister Prince Subana Puma at his residence in Yangtan for the purpose of urgently requesting that he do everything in his power to prevent a bloodbath at Longchen. At 12.15 p.m., in presence of his friend, Jan Simon Warawong, Dr. Yang Dao opened negotiations with the deputy, Prime Minister Pumi Vongmitit, representative of the Communist Party Lao in the Royal Lao Provisional Government of a Coalition concerning the military situation of the second military region under leadership of General Wang Pao, which was completely surrounded by communist troops. Dr. Yang Dao expressed his hope for peace among the multi-ethnic Laotian people, and finally convinced the Laotian communist leader to adopt a political solution instead of a military option to resolve the situation in the second military region. At 2.30 p.m., Dr. Yang Dao departed in a small Cessna airplane from the Yangtan International Airport to meet with General Wang Pao at his headquarters in Longchen. Dr. Yang Dao asked the Hmong general not to take the military initiative by taking the communist troops hiding in the forest surrounding the CIA base of Longchen because it would be suicide for the Hmong people. On May 14, 1975, at 10.30 a.m., General Wang Pao left Longchang by airplane for Thailand, and Dr. Yang Dao returned by car to Yangtan, where his extended family had waited in fear for his safety. Now it was time to plan for their escape from Laos. On May 15, 1975, at 2.30 a.m., Dr. Yang Dao, his wife and five small children, along with 30 members 
of his extended family left Yangtan carrying no baggage. They traveled in four small cars to the Mekong River, which separated Laos from Thailand, with the assistance of Mr. Yang Tsi Kuman. Five small boats from the Thailand side of the river carried them across to freedom. Thousands of Laotian refugees of all ethnic groups began to arrive in the refugee camps in Thailand, where the life conditions were horrific. At the end of May 1975, in Nampong refugee camp, Dr. Yang Dao received representatives from international organizations such as Miss Vivian Rouge from International Red Cross Committee. Bangkok, in June 1975, accompanied by Shou Bang, Dr. Yang Dao requested Dr. Belta, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, to provide humanitarian aid for Laotian refugees of all ethnic groups under the same condition for Cambodian and Vietnamese refugees. On August 4, 1975, at the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok, accompanied by Dr. Shervang Van Yi, Dr. Yang Dao met with U.S. Ambassador Charles Whitehouse, who had visited Long Tiang prior to 1975, and his political advisor, Mr. Hugh Towa, to request the intervention with the U.S. government and U.S. Congress to welcome the Laotian refugees of all ethnic groups from the refugee camps in Thailand to the United States of America. On October 24, 1975, Mr. Lionel Rosenblatt came with an official delegation from the U.S. State Department to meet with Dr. Yang Dao in the Nampong refugee camp in Thailand to negotiate the fate of the Laotian refugees of all ethnic groups. In July 1976, with the assistance of French ambassador André Zara. In Bangkok, Dr. Yang Dao evacuated his youngest son, who was very ill, along with his immediate family from refugee camp in Thailand to Paris, France. In Paris, France, Dr. Yang Dao helped Lao, Hmong, Cambodian, Vietnamese, and other international refugees to rebuild a new life by teaching French language and literature, social and economic systems, and civic organizations. In France, Dr. Yang Dao was frequently requested as keynote speaker at the Institute of Political Science in Paris and various international conferences on Southeast Asian political evolution and refugee issues. In November 1981, Dr. Yang Dao was invited as a keynote speaker on Hmong history and culture at the first international Hmong conference at the University of Minnesota. He gave his speech in French, which Mrs. Selvin Downing translated into English. In January 1983, Dr. Yang Dao was invited by the University of Minnesota to come from France to work as a Southeast Asian specialist at the College of Education and College of Liberal Arts. He was welcomed at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport by relatives and friends. Dr. Yang Dao teaching a Hmong culture immersion class for American educators, social workers, lawyers, and police officers in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Here, Dr. Yang Dao is urging Hmong students to study hard in school by explaining that education is the key for the future. He is also encouraging Hmong adults to go back to school and to work hard to become productive U.S. citizens. Dr. Yang Dao is giving a speech at the Hmong American New Year in Minneapolis, Minnesota, 
in December 2008. Mr. Chairman, honorable dignitaries, Mr. guest, in such spiritual and cultural circumstances, as, a new, as a newcomers in this land of hospitality and freedom, we the more, along with our fellow Laotians of diverse ethnic groups, want to take this special occasion to say thank you to the population of the United States of America for welcoming us from the refugee camps in Thailand over the past 30 years, and to the U.S. government, its federal and local authorities, churches, and organizations for their assistance in helping us becoming today an integral part of this great nation. Dr. Yang Dao is a teaching his Hmong modern songs, which he wrote in the late 1960s when he was a student in Paris, France, to Hmong and American students. Dr. Yang Dao's retirement begins. A new life of family responsibilities and social and cultural activities. <laughs> 